Unlike with most jobs where you're employed by a company, a WWE star is in fact what is called an independent contractor, which means that while you have signed a contract with a company, you're not legally seen as an employee, meaning you generally have a bit more freedom in your role. Generally. Unless, of course, it's WWE you're contracted to, because the exception to this rule appears to be being an independent contractor under Vince McMahon, who's now decided that wrestlers trying to make a bit of extra money on the side is a terrible thing and has now reportedly banned it. According to Raj Geary of Wrestling Inc, Vince McMahon has threatened wrestlers using platforms such as Twitch and Cameo that they could face being fired if they don't delete their accounts within 30 days. Several WWE stars use both platforms to connect with fans, something you'd have thought WWE would want to happen. According to Geary, Vince wrote a letter to his wrestlers which read, Some of you are engaged with outside third parties using your name and likeness in ways that are detrimental to our company. It is imperative that these activities be terminated within the next 30 days by Friday, October 2nd. Continued violations will result in fines, suspension, or termination at WWE's discretion. Fightful Select has noted that while some WWE stars aren't bothered by the news, a number of others are livid with Vince. One of the reported reasons for the ban is that WWE is upset with information leaking during streams. This has been seen recently with AJ Styles confirming he tested positive for COVID 19 on his Twitch stream. Unsurprisingly, a number of people are very upset about this decision, especially considering several people such as Xavier Woods have very large audiences outside WWE with his Up Up Down Down YouTube channel, Peyton Royce has just launched her own YouTube channel, and the likes of AJ Styles, Zelina Vega, Paige, Drake Maverick, and many others regularly stream on Twitch. PW Insider is reporting that there has been a lot of talk among talents about pushing back against WWE's edict, though there is some confusion about what is and isn't allowed going forwards. On his own Twitch stream, WWE announcer Mike Rome said that a lot of WWE stars would be changing our Twitch usernames so it doesn't mention WWE in the slightest. Legally, there is nothing they could do in this case. Renee Young took to Twitter to mock the decision, saying, So, guess now would be a good time to launch my Twitch and Cameo? Seems like you've gone out at a pretty good time there, Renee. Shut down that cookbook of yours. Shut it down. The last time we saw Akum and Razor of AOP in WWE was on the March 9th episode of Raw when they acted as Seth Rollins' beefy enforcers. It appears that this was the last time we'll see them in a WWE ring as it was announced last night that both have been released by the company. Despite winning the NXT and Raw Tag Team Championships, their WWE run was plagued with injuries and bad decisions such as splitting them from Paul Ellering upon their main roster debut. The latest injury to occur was a bicep injury to Razor and it seems this was the last straw for Vince and Co. It's a real shame as AOP could have had a great career in WWE in another life, and it's sad to see their run end like this. Razor has a history with MMA, so we could potentially see a return for him to cage fighting before long. It's been just two weeks since Roman returned to attack the Fiend and Braun Strowman at SummerSlam, and just a week since he defeated both men at Payback to win the Universal Championship, aligning himself with Paul Heyman. While fans have been asking for Roman to turn heel for what feels like years, Oh wait, that is because it's actually years, even in lockdown time. It appears the idea to have him turn heel came from the big dog himself. According to the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, it was in fact Roman who had the idea to return as a heel following his hiatus, but it still isn't known who actually pulled the trigger on the angle. Who's a good boy? You're a good boy, Roman. You're a good boy for turning heel. Really appreciate it, buddy. And now it's time for a review of last night's episode of SmackDown in about five minutes. Thank you for being awesome pledgehammers on Patreon, WrestleTalk's personal ring announcer Rodrigo Benitez, and no one names their kid this anymore, Larry. The show kicks off with Paul Heyman and new Universal Champion Roman Reigns, the former of which cut a scathing promo, which essentially boiled down to a you people promo, saying how nobody showed Reigns respect, which is kind of true. Reigns himself then had a couple of lines afterwards, saying all he has to do is show up and win. Branding. The first match of the night was Heavy Machinery versus Miz and Morris which was certainly a match. It was naturally building to a Tucker hot tag, but Otis just decided to win instead. Morrison then stole Otis's Money in the Bank briefcase. Oh yeah, I forgot he had that. And it was revealed later in the night that Otis didn't keep the contract in the briefcase, he kept it in his lunchbox. The briefcase was his actual lunchbox comedy. It was announced before the show that the number one contender to Reigns' Universal Championship would be decided in a fatal four-way between Sheamus, 
Big E, Matt Riddle, and King Corbin, three of which are exciting winners. But continuing their feud, Sheamus assaulted Big E backstage and hit a white noise through a car windshield, writing E out of the match in an awesome looking spot. I think this is a really smart move for many reasons. Not only does it further the Sheamus and Big E feud, and E is gonna be pissed when he comes back, but it writes E out of a universal title opportunity without him losing. After this came a rematch from Payback. Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax defending their new women's tag team championships against Bayley and Sasha Banks. This was a very fun match, possibly more so than the bulk of their match at Payback, though Payback did have the better finish, with Baszler being just the best. Look at her go. After Banks missed a meteora and hit the ring post, Baszler honed in on her knees and Jax looked to take advantage with the top rope Samoan drop. Bailey saved Banks from that predicament, but then Jax cross-bodied both Banks and Bailey and pinned them both, which I'm less of a fan of. But really, this match was all to set up the post-match angle. After the least helpful EMTs in the history of wrestling left Sasha to her own devices despite her not being able to walk, Bailey was helping her out of the ring before she finally snapped, attacking Banks, destroying her knee, and attempting to wrap a chair around her knee before instead deciding to wrap it around her neck and stomping on it from the second rope. Jesus! This was a great turn from Bailey, and the viciousness really played well from the long story they've been telling. The great thing about the Thunderdome is that WWE are now finally pulling the trigger on stories they've been spinning for ages, and this definitely has been long overdue. This also completely flips the dynamic of their classic NXT feud, which I'm all for and it prevents them treading old ground. This time they're forging a new path. I love this. Aside from the goddamn sound design, someone sort out some proper crowd noises, please. Michael Cole updates us that Banks has been taken to a local medical facility, but enough of your serious voice, Cole. It's time for Sami Zayn's really upbeat music, who hilariously put over that he's the Intercontinental Champion, yelling at Greg Hamilton and the production truck that they didn't introduce him as such. This brought out Hardy and AJ Styles, and the three of them brawled with Sami coming out on top and scrambling away with his title. We then got a vignette of someone in high heels and a long robe walking towards the camera, which might be a vignette for a returning Eva Marie, according to her Twitter. Oh boy. A very, very quick Firefly Funhouse promo came next, where Bray Wyatt mentioned that someone new is coming to the Funhouse, followed by an Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross promo, where Ramblin' Rabbit was seen in the background. Subtle. Alexa apologized for her actions last week and gave Nikki a hug, saying that she didn't know what came over her. I'm sure that apology will last a very long time. I'm fully expecting Nikki Cross to show up on the Funhouse next week. Wouldn't make any sense, but why not, right? After Big E was written out earlier in the night, Paul Heyman spoke to producer Adam Pearce off screen, and it was announced that Jay Uso would be inserted into the match instead. Uso then spoke to Reigns backstage ahead of the main event, and Reigns told him that maybe he could win one on his own this time. I love this decision, but I'll get into this more later. This led nicely into the main event Fatal 4-Way. Now, the order I've just said everything that happened in makes sense, right? A seamless show from segment to segment. Well, that's not the way WWE did it, because here's how it actually went down. Matt Riddle made his entrance for the main event, then there was an ad break, then there was the vignette with the high heels, then Otis revealed his money in the bank switcheroo, then John Morrison and Miz found that out themselves, then Jey Uso and Roman Reigns had their promo, then King Corbin made his entrance for the main event, then the four people in the main event brawled around the ring, then there was another ad break, then there was the Firefly Funhouse promo, then there was the promo with Nikki Cross and Alexa Bliss, then it cuts back to the ring where the four of them have stopped brawling and are patiently waiting in the four corners of the ring for the match to start. Makes perfect sense. The main event itself was pretty fun, with some fun spots peppered throughout, including Corbin throwing Jey Uso over the front row of the LED screens. The finish was equally as fun, with Sheamus bro-kicking Corbin, allowing Riddle to hit a bro to sleep on Sheamus and a floating bro on Corbin, but immediately after he was hit with a splash from Jey Uso, who picked up the win. I didn't think before today I'd be saying that Jey Uso facing Roman Reigns for the Universal Championship would be a good idea, but I think it's a great idea. Of course, heel Reigns would want to get his family into the title picture. I mean, nepotism, right? But not only that, how much of a heel is Reigns going to be when he absolutely brutalizes Jay 
in that match. He either is going to absolutely squash him in a matter of seconds, or he's going to slowly and purposefully dismantle him, and either way, what a dick! This is a perfect first feud for Reigns to solidify his heel character, so then he can go on to bigger feuds afterwards. I love this decision. Jay cut a very quick promo in the ring to end the show, saying he made the family proud. I would be eternally grateful if Reigns absolutely demolishes Jay at Clash of Champions, holds up his lifeless head to the camera, and says down the lens, I made the family proud. Oh man, I'm so, I'm so into this heel Reigns character. So that was Smackdown. Let me know what you thought of the show in the comments because I'll be replying to people from out of Otis' lunchbox. Briefcase, lunchbox, one of the two. Overall, I thought Smackdown was pretty great. The only real sour point was the Heavy Machinery and Miz and Morrison match and angle, which didn't really have a point. But everything else was at least good, if not great. And it's building to some really interesting feuds going forwards. This show gets a Smacktastic 4 out of 5. It's all out two tonight, so watch Mr. Davis and Luke Warm Luke Owen battle it out in Predictions Warfare for Luke's job and to become the inaugural jam that champion. Set your reminder for the live stream by clicking the video to the right and press the video below that to find out more about WWE admitting defeat to AEW. Subscribe here for daily wrestling news videos. I've been Chubba Pete Cornell, jam that jam.